Hey there, citizens, Paler here, and welcome back. No Star Citizen today. We will be getting back into it. Actually, I already have a, well, okay. For the Sunday slash Monday video that's coming along, um, basically I'm waiting on 3.6 at this point. I wanna see some of the new content. Uh, I expect that to be going out to the wider PTU here, probably later this week. Uh, and then, you know, I do think this patch has a good chance of rolling out relatively efficiently compared to the previous ones since they're not adding any massive new landing zones and you know they're not bringing in new planets or anything like that uh, i don't think this patch is going to hammer the servers nearly as bad causing a whole bunch of other problems uh, so i'm hopeful that this patch will roll out fairly quickly uh, once we start seeing PTU, I should be wave one after the Yuokade, thanks to the subscription. Uh, so I should get some impressions of that up pretty quick. Uh, but in short, we're just kind of waiting. That doesn't mean no Star Citizen. We will have Star Citizen later this week. Uh, I already have a video uploaded. I just don't know if it's going to go live Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, now that 3.5.1 is out, they've fixed the... Uh, the arena commander but they've mainly fixed the rental system using the rec credits uh in order to get weapons so I'm, what i'm going to start doing is kind of once a week probably on wednesdays uh a loadout type video where i'm going to go out and take this weapon or this type of weapon this class of weapon or a specific ship uh, and try that thing out i'm going to be looking for input from the viewers like is there a specific weapon you would like to see used you know if, if uh options on that or a specific ship and everything uh leave that in the comments i'll pick one of those going forward for the next week like i said the first one of those is uploaded and ready to go i just got to figure out depending on when this video goes live we'll determine if that video goes live on wednesday or thursday and that is going to become a recurring theme as long as the rec system continues to work because it was broken in 3.5 they got it fixed in 3.5.1 Hopefully it stays fixed in 3.6. We will see. Uh, so that's Star Citizen. We will be getting back to that here as soon as I have something more. Okay, that out of the way. Today I want to talk about the game I've single-handedly played more of over the last five years than any other game uh, out there. Uh, probably more than like the next two or three games actually combined. I've put a lot of times into World of Warships. Uh, and I ask, please give me, if, you, if you're, you know, whatever, give me three, four minutes. Let me explain why I'm doing this video. Uh, if after that you're not interested, that's cool. I completely understand. Uh, before we go any further, I am not being sponsored in any way, shape, or form for this video. Uh, however, there is a recruitment event currently going on, which has kind of spurred a little bit of the timing of this video. Uh, in fact, this is a video I've kind of considered making for a past couple of weeks uh, if you look I'll, I'll maybe link to it here um, I've actually done plenty of World of Warships videos in the past uh, and in the past I've also done at least one kind of video where I explain why I think people should consider the game uh, I think I've actually done two of them approximately two years apart from each other uh, and this is kind of was something I wanted to do like an updated one why I think you should maybe consider World of Warships because it is a game that I truly truly enjoy i really like this game uh, i'll show a link to my account here or the front page of my account i have like over 4,000 battles played in world of warships and your average battle is going to run about 17 minutes i have like 3,800 in random battles plus then another thousand or so in ranked and all kinds of other stuff uh depending on the different game modes they keep track differently but it's it's 4,000 4,500 battles played in world of warships at about 17 minutes so i've played a lot of this game this isn't something oh they're doing a recruit recruitment thing. I can see there's rewards I could get. Let me do that video for a game I don't play. That's absolutely not the case. Uh, if you don't do the recruitment thing, that's fine. I just really think people should maybe give the game a look. Uh, if I'm being completely honest here, like I have probably convinced 12 to 15 friends to give the game a play. You know, give it a try and, and sit down with it. You know, I'm constantly looking for people to play with. It's fun to division up with and everything. Out of that, we'll say 12 people. All of them, with the exception of one, enjoyed some aspect of it. They might not have stuck with it uh, for the long term. They got to the point where the grind really kicks in because there is a point later in the game uh, where it really does get grindy, but they've enjoyed elements of it. There's only been one person that actually that sat down and when they got done with it, they're like, no, I did not like it. That was not for me. Uh, and that's kind of been my experience overall with seeing people. People that give it a try do tend to enjoy this game. Uh, and it's good for that re or th there's a depth to it there's some good elements to it that are very unique from anything else um being completely honest still on on the same front like i remember when this game was in beta which was 
four and a half, five years ago, uh, there was the ability to buy in. You could pay, it was like 45 or $65 uh, that would give you beta access. Uh, and in return, you would gain you know, a couple of premium ships uh, and some currency for when the game would actually launch and everything. And I really like the theme. I, I look back and I remember, I don't know if anybody else remembers these. There were these Battle Stations games. They were Xbox One, Xbox 360 area. Uh, there was like Battle Stations Midway, Battle Stations Pacific, and I think Battle Stations Pacific 2 or Midway 2. Uh, there was two or three of them. They were always kind of fun. Uh, and the idea of sailing around in a battleship, massive broadsides and these large cannons was always something that kind of appealed to me. But without having ever played a wargaming game, knowing some of the thoughts that came out of World of Tanks, there, were, there was some real concerns. Uh, if you're not up to speed, one of the big things about World of Tanks is this notion of pay to win because of premium ammo. Uh, so in World of Tanks, you can buy ammo that you cost premium currency uh, and that ammo has better values on it across the board it has better penetration better damage some of that you know depending on the tank it can vary a little bit uh, but it's almost always the best ammo a tank can can equip and the only way to get it is through premium currency and I knew about this and that had me really concerned once it came out of beta and it was free to play for everyone I went ahead and gave world of warships a go and to my surprise, there were no mechanics like that. There was no type of ammo that I had to buy. That doesn't mean there's no, you know, it is a free to play game. There are things they're doing in order to try and get money from you. Primarily it comes down to that grind I was speaking about a moment ago, but we'll come back to that later on. Uh, but in terms of how I was able to effectively engage on a map in a battle, uh, in no way did my cash shop purchases really affect that. I was able to be completely effective. Uh, it's literally any one ship in this game can sink any other ship in this game. That includes all the way from the bottom tier, the lowest tier, the entry level ships, up to the most powerful highest level ships. Is it realistically going to happen? Absolutely not. Now they're never going to actually see each other, but a, in theory a tier 1 well played could sink a tier 10 poorly played. Never going to happen, but it is possible. Um, and that's not something that can be said for some of the World of Tank stuff, where there are certain vehicles, unless you're running that premium ammo, you cannot penetrate them, you cannot damage them. They can just sit there and laugh at you. You shoot everything you have at them all day, and you're just never going to harm them. That's not the case with World of Warships. Uh, so once I got over that, I really dove into and found a game that I quite enjoyed. It was a game that had a very low entry point in terms of skill uh, within you know an hour you're in you're sailing around you're shooting at other ships little low level cruisers to begin with uh, you're practicing your aim the entry level is very easy uh, and it's also a game that has I don't want to call it slow but it definitely has a slower gameplay you know at this point in time I'm 35 years old actually I'm 36 years old now um, I don't have the reaction, the reflex, the twitch skills that I used to. Uh, the thoughts of going back and playing Counter-Strike uh, or trying to play uh, Fortnite or something, just it's a massive turnoff because I know I'm going to run up against people that have 0.3, 3 tenths of a second uh, faster reaction times than I do just at my older age. Uh, and that's an unfortunate thing that I just can't overcome. Well, World of Warships, because of the way it plays out, it's while the gameplay you're constantly doing inputs and stuff there's time for you to think and react and see uh doesn't mean it doesn't get hectic at times but it's not uncommon to see battleships engaging each other at 18 19 24 kilometers apart where when they fire their shells those shells are in the air for 10 12 upwards of 14 seconds uh, so there's more calculation on the back side like okay where is that ship gonna be in 12 seconds which way is it maneuvering how do i adjust my aim for that uh you'll send out torpedo tubes or uh, waves of torpedoes out of your ship and those torpedoes are traveling 15 kilometers they're going to be in the water for 40 seconds and it's like all right well i kind of got to predict where this ship is going uh, so there's much more of a thinking man and a strategy level to it uh, so it's easy to pick up but at the same time there's an extremely high skill ceiling the difference between a good player or an average player and a great player isn't in how well they can aim, at least not much of it. For the most part, 
with practice, you can become good with a ship. You learn their shells. You'll be able to aim and hit, you know, 60, 70% of the time. The real thing that sets apart good players from truly great players is the players that know the extra systems, the underlining mechanics, know the strength of their ship, the weakness of their ship, and then the strength and weaknesses of their opponents. They will know when to go in hard, when to push and get in really close to a ship because the ship they're fighting doesn't have torpedoes. They have The ship they're fighting has better guns than they do, has better penetration values, but doesn't have torpedoes. You have torpedoes. So your best bet, oh, I'm in this situation, I want to rush that ship, take that one, maybe two really hard hits, but then dump my torpedoes and finish them off where they can defend. Or knowing, oh, in this situation, there's nothing I can do here. I might as well just cut and run. And it's better to go quiet and go undetected and get out in the open. People that can look at that, evaluate that, see that ship and know that those things. I don't want to go too in depth as it would be a lot of terms talking about penetration, over penetration, bounce, auto bounce. There's a lot of things that unless you're playing don't really make sense. But there's a massive, massive amount of knowledge that can be picked up of learning your specific ship but then also all the other ships you're competing against uh, and by doing so like i said it's an easy to pick up game that has a very high skill ceiling and you can as a player you can constantly be improving uh, and that's going to be something that's good for some people bad for some other people but it's really going to be dependent on like what it is you're looking for i really like that um, I actually have a whole list here of things good and bad to go about. I think next, like if, if what I've talked about does somewhat interest you, you kind of like that idea of these long range bar barrages of salvos of ammo going out and all this stuff. Um, we should talk about the free to play model a little bit and how it works. So there, there is elements of this game that aren't pay to win, but are pay to accelerate, uh, pay to progress a lot faster. You're going to start off, if you begin playing, you're going to be in Tier 1. There's 10 tiers of ships. So Tier 1 is entry-level cruisers. Then at Tier 2, it splits out. You can do cruisers or destroyers for most of the lines. Uh, some lines are not completely finished as they constantly, they're adding new nations and stuff. Uh, and then uh, Tier 3 battleships come in. Tier 4 aircraft carriers come in uh, as you work down. And then they go all the way up to Tier 10 where everything maxes out. And that's kind of the most powerful, up-to-date present ships which are generally still like 1945 type design ships uh, and so on when you first start out uh tier one to tier two is literally going to take you at most two battles uh, if you do reasonably well you'll get enough xp in your single battle at tier one to research your tier two ship if you're a little bad it'll be two battles maybe three battles if, you, if you're really really bad uh, then once you're in your tier two ship it'll take eight battles six to eight battles to research your tier three ship your tier three ship to your tier four ship will probably take about 20 25 battles your tier four to five ship will take about 50 battles and then you can see where this is going and this is going to be the number one thing and where a lot of the premium shop stuff comes in once you start getting to the high tier stuff primarily tiers six to seven to eight to nine to ten uh the grind does become kind of excessive uh it could easily take you 300 battles to go from tier 9 to tier 10 if you're trying to unlock we'll say the Yamato the tier 10 Japanese battleship uh, and you're sitting with the Izumo at tier 9 once you get into that ship for the first time you could easily take you 300 battles to unlock the tier 10 to get enough XP well what they do the primarily what they sell within the uh, Within the premium shop are ways to reduce that grind. So you can buy premium game time, premium account time, which will double your XP. So now instead of 350, you're down to 150. They will sell camouflages. Now these camouflages by default do have a little bit of stats on them. Primarily what they do is they reduce your detectability by 3%, 2%, I forget what it is, uh, and increase dispersion by three or 2%. So that's actually a mechanical adjustment. Um, but in addition to that, they will also have plus 100% more XP gained, plus 50% commander XP gained, plus 30% credit XP gained. Uh, so they have these other stats on them that can again reduce it. So now instead of um, 150 matches, now you're 120 matches. And then there are what are called signal flags, which again can improve the amount of XP you earn, currency you earn, those things. So now you're down to about 100 matches. So through the premium shop, you can reduce the amount of grind significantly. Uh, Going back to those camouflages very briefly, there are also 
camouflages that can just be burnt, earned with credits in game, very cheap ones that also have those base stat reductions. So the stat reduction of the uh, detection ability range and the uh, the dispersion of shells fired at you, uh, you can just buy those with in-game currency. And it, even if you're a bad player, you'll have more than enough currency to afford these things. I think they're they're like 1,200 credits per one. They're really, really cheap. So you, you, you don't need to have a premium camouflage in order to get the actual benefits that adjust the gameplay on that type of stuff. Back to the, the premium shop stuff. So that you have that. You then also have premium ships that you can buy. And this is what a lot of people are going to have talked about if you've seen it. Uh, some of these ships can be quite expensive. Uh, but what a premium ship does is it's a very good XP earner. Uh, so there's multiple XPs that I don't want to go into right now. But you have the specific XP and then like a general XP. The premium ships, uh, what you can do is you can run them and they earn a higher rate of XP reward. So you can go out and maybe you're not really enjoying the tier 9 Izumo. Well, you could take out a premium tier 7 ship, earn a whole bunch of XP, dump that XP into the Izumo in order to get the Yamato and kind of skip it. So that's the other thing they sell. They sell the premium ships uh, overall. Uh, and those ships range from about $12 in price upwards of... $140, $160 in price. So some of them are very expensive and you wouldn't even look at them unless you're already well-established big fan of the game. Uh, this does raise concern though about overpowered premium ships. And the fact of the matter is, yes, it has happened at times. There have been some very overpowered premium ships that have been released into the game um, and that's unfortunate. Uh, the bigger problem happens is because people have paid real world money for these premiums, they don't tend to nerf them too much uh, as they don't want to get yelled at and uh, be, you know, bait and switch type thing. Uh, they don't want to get lawsuits because of that. So for the most part, when a premium gets released, if it's overpowered, it's going to stay relatively overpowered overall. Now, that doesn't mean you have to buy a premium to get an overpowered ship. There are a number of ships within the tech trees, the normal grind ones that you pick up, that at one point or another were super overpowered. Uh, I remember the Conqueror, which is the tier 10 um, Rush Royal Navy battleship. When that thing first came out, holy crap, was it overpowered. Um, the, the, the Kabarosk, the, the tier 10 destroyer from the... Uh, the Russians. There was a period where that thing was an absolute monster. Right now, the Henry the uh, Fourth, which is the uh, the French Tier Ten cruiser, that thing is very very strong. The difference here, though, is these overpowered ships tend to be somewhat flavor of the month. Uh, they'll be overpowered, but because you didn't pay actual credits, you didn't pay money for them, you earned them in game, these will get rebalanced. So there's constant balance adjustments, new ships being added in that are non-premiums. Sometimes they're very strong, they get rebalanced, sometimes they end up really weak, and they kind of moves around. As the meta shifts, there are some. So yes, premium ships that are kind of pay to win, super strong, do exist. Uh, but they are not the norm by any means. I can name on like one hand the ones that are really, really strong. You got the Belfast, the Kutuzov, uh, the Gremyashi. You know, there were some really, really broken ones. But at the same time, if we go back to what I was saying really at the very beginning of the game, a really strong ship isn't going to make, save, make you a great player. Any one ship can sink another ship. So just having a premium ship, while it does give you the potential for a whole lot more output with one of these overpowered ships, uh, it's not a guaranteed win by any means. It doesn't mean you're just going to buy victory going that route. Uh, there, there was a long time where the Turpets, which was kind of the highest tier one you could get, it was a tier seven uh, premium battleship. There would be people that would play 15 games like, oh, I kind of like this. They would go, they would drop $55 on the Turpets. They'd be in tier seven, or was that tier eight? It's tier eight, I think. Um, tier eight, all of a sudden, and they would get their faces stomped in. And the Turpets is quite a good ship, uh, by no means overpowered, but it was still quite a good ship. And just because they didn't know what they were doing, it, it came down more to skill and knowing what's going on. They, they would show up and they wouldn't know the ships they're fighting and they wouldn't know how to react to that, uh, how to choose the correct ammunition, all that stuff. So that's kind of the premium shop of how it works. Uh, they also do do loot boxes. Um, they're, they're called containers in this. Uh, so you can earn containers via playing the game. They like to throw a lot of containers at you for playing. So every day there's three earnable ones just through farming XP in the game. Uh, then there's also constantly events with more loot containers in them uh, that you just earn for, through doing the event. 
uh, what they'll do then is they will sell versions of those containers. So in those containers, there'll be some type of like currency that you can get or a small chance at maybe getting a mission, which you can use to unlock a high tier ship very quickly uh, or have a premium inside of it. A premium ship inside of it can come out of these containers. So if you don't have time to really farm these containers or if you want to just, you know, like I really want that ship right there, you can go over to the shop buy a bunch of those containers up rather than farming them in game uh, i don't want to go too much further for the most part you know it's a free-to-play game there are loot boxes within the game those loot boxes for the most part give you signal flags camouflages uh, and the occasional chance of acquiring a premium inside of them the premium is almost always acquirable in some other way also you can either outright buy it or you can earn it through gameplay uh, in other means so there's a lot going on there. It's not the best free to play model out in the world. There's definitely are elements that if you throw more money at it, you are going to have some advantages, but it's also far from the worst. It's not like World of Tanks where I have put more money into the game. So I have ammo that does more damage than I would if I didn't. That's just not the way it works overall. Um, now that we are, how much, we're 19 minutes in. So that gives you a good idea of how things are. I do have a whole list here of positives and negatives I wanted to go over uh, a little bit more uh, if you are interested in this and I probably should have brought this up far more earlier on uh, and you want to give the game a go like I said right now they are running a recruitment uh, thing going on a, a re recruitment event uh, if you don't know someone else that you can get a link from mine will be in the description uh, you click on that you meet up and basically if you play if you get up to at least tier six I think uh, if you're a new player, uh, you'll get some rewards. I'll get some rewards. Uh, if you're a returning player that's played before, you have to play something like 20 battles at any tier, uh, and then you'll get rewards and I'll get rewards. It's it, that simple. It's just some premium camouflages, things along those lines to help kick you off some premium game time uh, as you play through. So follow that link if you're interested and go from there. Okay, 20 minutes in. Now we can really dive in and go into a lot more. So we're going to mix this up. We'll do some pros, some cons, and then there's some stuff that's a little bit varied that you're either, depending on what your approach is, it may or may not be a good thing. Uh, match length. So I, I talked about at the beginning, I have like 4,000, 4,500 matches and they average about 17 minutes. Something that I find to be overall very good, no matter what, a match is never going to take more than 20 minutes. Uh, unlike, say, a, a MOBA or something, where sometimes those matches take 45 minutes to an hour, uh, guaranteed after 20 minutes, whatever match you're in, it is going to end. There's a, there's, you're either going to win or lose based on a parameter, say, points, points gained, uh, ship, ship sunk or whatever, or at the end of 20 minutes, that timer is going to round out, it's going to look at who has the more points acquired or whatever, and that team's going to win. Uh, so you can go in and you can sit down and say, oh, I have 30 minutes. You know you can get one full match in. Uh, also, if you die early, so say you go out and, you know, you just run into bad luck. You take a big torpedo salvo early on that you did not expect. You get sunk five minutes in. You can return to port, grab a different ship, go right back out. So it's not uncommon to be able to get four matches in in an hour, sometimes even five matches. Uh, and you don't lose anything by leaving port going back or by leaving the match going back to port and taking out a different ship that other ship you still get all the xp and everything when you go back to port and that match is complete you can pull it up and see all your stats and all that stuff there's no lost tracking on that you don't have to sit around and watch a match play out for 15 additional minutes even though you've been dead uh, in order for that uh, so i personally really like that i think that it, you know knowing no matter what within 20 minutes i'm done uh works out really well for it the game does have unfortunately somewhat limited game modes overall so the primary game mode is it's 12 v 12 there may be three caps where you can go in and you cap a certain amount of caps and you get points or sunk ships they play very similarly like they, they classify them as different game modes uh this conquest type thing or single enemy ships or whatever uh but for the most part they all come down to about the same thing uh 12 v 12 Whoever controls the map at the end, either by sinking the other team or controlling cap points, wins. And that's the way the vast majority of the game modes are. That's a little annoying. And over time, it does get a little redundant. Now, over time, they've tried to adjust this and increase. So there's also, there's ranked battles now. Uh, they've been around for a little while, which is 7v7. Uh, you move up in rank, you get rewards. There's clan battles, which was 7v7. It's now going to be 6v6. 
uh, which they're kind of adjusting and tweaking all of that. So these are a little more intimate, smaller scale battles. Uh, one player can really have a lot more of an effect on a 7v7 or a 6v6 if you're really playing out of your mind uh, than you can on a 12v12. But the game modes even then, they're still about the same. It's whoever controls the map at the end, either by sinking the other team, control points, or when time expires, uh, is going to win. They do do a fair number of events. So pretty much every major holiday, there's going to be an event for. They've done some amazing uh, April Fool's Day events. There was one year where it was you were in a bathtub, so you were like a little fake boat in a bathtub, and you were little destroyers running around. There were rubber duckies floating around and stuff, which is really good. Uh, so they do do some fun April Fool's events. They do some great uh, Halloween events uh, with stuff that they bring in. They, they also try new mechanics. So last Halloween, they tried submarines out. Uh, and they'll probably try them again this Halloween as they try to figure out a way to work them into the game to have submarines. Um, it's, it's, it's some good stuff. So those events to come around. In fact, coming up within a couple of weeks of this video going live, uh, possibly not even a couple of weeks, possibly within 10, 15 days of this video going live, there's going to be a new sort of battle royale mode they're going to test out. Uh, pseudo battle royale. So it's going to be three t or four teams of three. Uh, so 12 ships in a single map. Uh, groups of three going at it uh last team surviving wins which you know there's a lot of battle royales out there i wouldn't jump into this one just for that but it's something nice to mix up and, and play slightly different and that should be going live anytime now and with that event there's going to be premium camouflages to be earned probably a premium ship to be earned some other stuff there's a lot of things that you can just earn by playing uh, and walk away with at the end of the day so like i said the the base game mode is somewhat limited they do try some other stuff in short windows as they try to figure out some new game modes to work in and everything uh but for the most part it's going to be 12 v 12 whoever controls the map at the end of 20 minutes or sinks the entire enemy fleet um the game can be extremely rewarding at times it really can uh when you go out and you're playing out of your mind and say there's two well-balanced evenly matched teams you can go out and you can have a great round where you make a significant difference to the outcome of that battle. Uh, and this can generally will happen in either battleships or destroyers. Uh, cruisers are a little more tough to influence battles like this, uh, but where you're just lining up and you'll you'll see shots and you'll take those shots and the, the volleys go exactly where you aim. There's no dispersion on the shells. And it's an extremely rewarding, satisfying game when that happens uh, to the point where that's why I keep going back 4,000 plus matches. That being said, there's also times when the game can be unbelievably frustrating. As I mentioned a moment ago, when you're in 12v12, one ship can have a tough time really carrying overall. Even if you have one of these quote unquote overpowered premiums that don't really exist too much. Um, even with that, if you run up against another team and that team's even remotely confident, the most powerful ship in game under focus fire from three ships or so uh, doesn't even need to be under direct fire but like a destroyer spotting you uh, laying torps out in front of you allowing a cruiser to get behind an island and lob HE at you and everything while another battleship kind of tanks you up and everything can completely neutralize you so you can be playing extremely well but if you don't have the support of at least somewhat competent team helping you nothing you can do is going to turn that around and win that battle there's, there's no real way where you can carry a complete team of potatoes to victory. You can carry a team of moderately competent team that is going one for one with the enemy to a significant victory, but you can't just drag those potatoes. And that can be frustrating. Uh, sometimes the, you'll just, you'll hit the matchmaking where three, four, five, six battles in a row, it's like watching people just roll their faces on their keyboard. Like, what are you doing? How are you playing this bad? How did you make it here? and you don't understand the basics mechanics of the game at tier 9, tier 10, or whatever, can be very, very frustrating, because then you're like, there's nothing I can do. I, got, you, I, I went out, I sank two or three ships, I was the best on the team, but we still didn't stand a chance at all. Uh, and that can be very frustrating, and this ties in somewhat with the matchmaking. The way they approach the matchmaking is they kind of just want it, they want you in-game fast. They've kind of come around as of late and there's somewhat smart mechanics within the matchmaking. So there'll be three battleships on one team, three battleships on the other team. Three cruisers on one team, three cruisers on the other team. They'll also look within that and they'll be like, okay, these cruisers here have radar. So maybe four of the cruisers have radar. They'll try and put two on one team, two on the other team. So both teams have two radars. It doesn't always work out 100% because maybe there's five radar cruisers in queue, so they can't 
split that up evenly. They can't put half a cruiser on each team. Uh, and again, their number one focus is getting people in match quickly. So you're not going to have that one radar cruiser sit in queue an extra couple of minutes uh, in order to get dumped into an even matchup. Uh, so it doesn't always balance out perfectly. The good news is, though, in general, you're going to be in queue less than 30 seconds from the time you hit go. 30 seconds later, you're loading into a match and you're going. It's very rare for it to be more than 30 seconds, uh, with the exception of maybe if you're playing uh, high-tier aircraft carriers. Uh, but even then, probably not much more. Uh, unfortunately, though, what this doesn't mean is this doesn't take into account how good is that player with that ship. They they don't know. They, they don't try to adjust the teams and say, okay, we have one really good 90% player over here. Let's put a 90% player over there. No, it's it's literally, okay, this amount of battleships, this amount of battleships, this amount of cruisers, this amount of cruisers, and all that stuff. So you can very easily end up with massively skewed teams where on one side, there's a whole lot of really skilled players, and on the other side, there's a whole lot of not skilled players. And it's just a face roll, and it becomes very frustrating. There is a little bit of an explanation for this, if you guys care, but basically what it comes down to is, I'm an above average player, in brawling battleships and uh, gunboat destroyers. I'm a below average player in torpedo destroyers, but say there's a new ship, I've got six battles into it, right? I don't even have it fully upgraded or anything like that. How do you determine how good I am with that? In six battles, I'm still learning that ship. So it's very tough for them to put a, look at a player and be like, oh, they're going to do, they're going to on average perform at this skill level with this ship, right? That's very difficult because you might only have a handful of battles in that ship. It might not be a ship that su suits your play style. It could be something you're still learning. You know, there, there's a lot of things that come into play there. So there is an understandable reason for why they don't do it. Um, let's see. The uh, Another other for, I'm not sure if this is good or bad thing. I, I think this is relatively a positive thing is there is a large swath of gameplay that can actually be played, or, or there's a large variety in how you can play. On one hand, you have Japanese destroyers. These tend to be torpedo boats. Uh, so very stealthy, they're hard to find. Uh, they can put out lots of torpedoes that hit very hard. What this means though is their gun systems, while not, well, their gun systems lack a little bit. They tend to be very low rate of fire. Uh, they're hard to turn them and keep them on target. So these ships, they kind of skulk around on the edge of the map. They launch in massive waves of torpedoes at stuff. Uh, they're kind of very... They're, they're, they're all or nothing type ships. You either launch a salvo of torpedoes and you do a massive amount of damage or they you, you, you launch your torpedoes and that ship that you aimed them at just happened to turn and you completely miss and do no damage and you're sailing around for the next 90 seconds waiting for your torpedoes to reload, doing almost nothing. Uh, you can juxtapose that with, say, Russian destroyers, which are gunboats. So these guys are sailing around out in the open, they're firing their guns, they're maneuvering and stuff, and they're pelting targets, and while their guns aren't doing much damage, they're just putting out massive volumes of fire in order to, you know, death by a thousand cuts types things. Uh, and they're very high risk, high reward type ships, as if you don't take any damage, if, if, if the targets shooting at you are not very accurate, you can pretty much operate with impunity and just pepper targets with fire. But that one battleship gets a good salvo off and you don't turn the right way or something and that salvo hits, there goes two thirds of your HP, you're now one shot from dead uh, and now everyone's shooting at you and everything. So high risk, high reward, that's within the destroyers. Uh, you then have cruisers, I vary very much. You have open water cruisers that are stealthier and they like to shoot very large salvos uh, of heavy hitting damage. You have American cruisers that kind of camp islands and they camp angles uh, and they try, they basically set up uh, attack angles and they wait for ships to come into that area and then they just unload on them with massive volumes of fire and everything. Uh, you have battleships that are, some of them sit back further, uh, lob in massive volleys, this is the Yamato type stuff, very accurate cells. Uh, you have brawling battleships, the, the German line is very good with this, that like to get in close uh, and they unload massive volumes of secondary fire onto their targets while their main guns are not as accurate. Once you're in eight kilometers, even inaccurate or inaccurate battleship guns start to do some really good damage in close range and everything. So there's there's a huge volume, there, there's a lot of different play styles within this relatively focused game overall. And that's before we even bring in aircraft carriers, but we're not gonna talk about aircraft carriers right now. Um, a somewhat, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a positive or a negative, but something that also, as we start to wind down here, something else that happens a lot 
is there's constant updates. So about every six to eight weeks, there's a new update within the game. Uh, with that update, they tend to roll out some minor changes and about every third update, so every 18 weeks or so, uh, there will be a new tech tree line that comes online. So coming up here soon is going to be the French destroyers. They should be coming about 12 weeks from now, we think, maybe as close as eight weeks from now. Uh, and when this happens, it tends to shift the meta. Uh, so there was a time when the meta was all torpedo boats. And then they did some changes to it. They slowed down the torpedoes overall. They adjusted how fast ships turn on in general. Uh, and the torpedo meta kind of went away and then became the long range battleship meta. Was that the next one? Doesn't really matter. But then there was a new meta that kind of came out of that. Um, with this, with this French destroyer line, these are going to be more open water destroyers, super fast. They're going to be firing. Uh, so what's going to probably happen is we're going to probably go to a heavy destroyer meta. Where if you're a large battleship, a Yamato, a group of Kura first, a uh, Montana, uh, you're going to be getting focused down by a bunch of these little destroyers flinging HE at you from all over the place. And they're, they're going to be way out there. You're going to have a tough time hitting them. It's probably going to drive a lot of destroyers away. What this is going to do is this is going to mean all of a sudden cruisers going to rise up. There's going to be an improvement in cruisers that are very good at sniping longer range destroyers. Things like the Russian line that have very good gun velocity. Uh, so right now where the meta is sort of battleship focused it's probably going to, in about six or 12 weeks, it's gonna to shift to a more destroyer and uh, Russian cruiser focus. Uh, who knows what'll come after that before, you know, it's, it's constantly changing. This means you constantly need to be adapting as a player. I kind of like that. I like that I'm constantly being challenged, trying to figure out where does my skill, my play style fit within the macho or fit within the, the new meta of the game. However, if you're someone that has your niche that you're really good at, say the Shimikaze, which was the Japanese tier 10 torpedo boat, maybe that was your thing. You were very, very good at it. Whether you liked it or not, the meta shifted away from that. All of a sudden there were aircraft carriers and there were planes overhead spotting you and you were very limited in what you could do. And your ship went from being one of the more dominant to one of the least dominant ships just because of change. You didn't change your gameplay but just because of the mechanical changes on the back end with one of these updates or different ship lines that came online, all of a sudden you're not very good anymore. That can be very frustrating. Uh, so it's gonna really come down to the person really, whether you like that or not. Um, for me, I'm relatively good on it. Going over my notes here, we're finishing up. I think the last little bit, which again is gonna be kind of an other, I don't know if this is good or bad. Well, it's definitely not bad. For me personally, I also very much like the history within the game. Uh, there are a lot of classic ships that we've heard about, seen about, there's stories told about from World War II and everything. Uh, you got the Missouri, the Alabama, the Yamato, uh, there's the Hindenburg, there is the, uh, not the Duke of York, what's the uh, the Hood, um, Bismarck, Tirpitz, all of these classic ships. And they're rendered out very nicely, they're well done. Uh, and they are impressive to actually look at just sitting in port. If you're a fan of like big military war machines and the history of them and the classics of them. Um, having that definitely does help. Going in and, and watching a Bismarck sink a hood is kind of entertaining to see. It's also kind of entertaining to see uh, a Prince Jorgen uh, being sunk by a hood or something, vice versa, because like all of these ships are in there uh, and their histories overall are very good. Actually, I think I have that backwards. Which one? No, yeah, Bismarck sank hood. Turpitz was the one stuck in port, if I remember correct, my history correctly. Um, but all these ships are in there. Uh, and that's, you know, it's a small thing, but having that passion about the product a little bit on the back end definitely helps. Uh, so if you're looking for some of that stuff, they also, they, within their YouTube channel, if you check out the World of Warships YouTube channel, um, about every three months, they like to put out like their, their almost history channel type things. Like the history channel used to do these where they go and do ship tours and stuff. Uh, I don't think they do them anymore. Well, World of Warships, board gaming actually still does this. They've done a bunch of different ones from all over the world. American ships, British ships, Russian ships all over the place. Um, they visit these museums and stuff and they do really good videos about this stuff. If you're just interested in that side of things, you can go watch them on their channel. And I think as we're coming around on almost 40 minutes, that about does it. I should have forewarned everyone as this was going kick off. Um, this was going to be a long one. But there's a lot here. There really is. The game's not perfect by any means. But for as free-to-play models go, it's on the better side of things, the fairer side of things. Uh, and 
there's just a lot there to really dive into and sink your teeth into if you're into it. And we really only scratched the surface for a lot of the deeper mechanics. We, we really didn't go into the mechanics really at all other than explaining they existed. Um, but yeah, I, I think to bring it all back together, if you are interested in trying the game out and you don't know anybody else, description down below, follow that link or whatever. When you sign up, what you'll do is you'll, once you play so many, you get some free stuff. You'll see it. It's all explained in there. Uh, but it does give you some premium items in order to help initially get you rolling along. You just have to play up to a certain tier. I think it's tier six uh, before you go, which will take 60 battles, give or take, in order to get up to tier six, 60 to 70 battles, depending on the player, maybe 80 uh, and so on. So hopefully you guys, uh, yeah, I don't know who would have watched all 38 minutes of this, but once I get going, I do go. Uh, but that is World of Warships. That's why I think maybe you should give it a look and see. There might be something there that you like. Uh, until next time, this has been Power. Thanks for watching.